Hi, my name is Mohamed Rahmedov. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss about antiderivatives. So in the beginning of the lecture, I would like to ask you a question, like what is the derivative of x in the square, for example? What's the derivative of the f of x, which is equal to x in the square? Well, the answer is going to be uh, f prime of x, which is equal to the 2x, as we did before, using the formula of the derivatives for the power functions. Uh, if I ask you another question, like what is the derivative of f of x, which is equal to the 2x in the square, for example, then you can tell me that the derivative of this function is equal to the 4x simply. Now, what I would like to do is, I would like to say, hey, you are given an answer. So let's say you are given that f prime of x is equal to, or let, let me call this like f of x, is equal to um, 3x in the square, for example. Right? And if I say, hey, what is going to be the question here? So previously, I asked you the question. It was like, hey, you are given a function. What is this derivative? Here you're given a function, what is this derivative? Now I'm giving you, hey, there is a derivative, what is the function itself? Well, the function you can figure out is going to be equal to the x in the cube, because the derivative of the x in the cube is going to be 3x in the square, and we call this as the antiderivative of the f of x. So this f of, capital F of x is going to be called as an antiderivative of the f of x. So this is what is called the antiderivative. Well, if you are given the derivative of the function, you would like to figure out the original function. So that if you take a derivative of the original function, you're going to get exactly this one. So in general, we would like to figure out the formula which will give you the antiderivative of any power function. So let, let me give you the formula, antiderivatives of power functions and if you remember f of x which is equal to the x and the power of n is going to be called as a power function so now if you are given the f of x which is equal to x and the power of n then its antiderivative is going to be equal to x and the power of n plus one divided as n plus one plus some constant. Well, it is always easy to check whether this is the correct antiderivative or not. So in order to do this, we need to always check whether the derivative of the capital F is going to be equal to the small f of x. So again, you will be given this function. You need to figure out the capital F. And if you are given a power function, you can apply this for. So first of all, let us just check whether this is true. So the derivative of the capital F of x is going to be equal to, if you remember, so it's going to be 1 divided as n plus 1. It's a constant times is the derivative of the x in the part of n plus 1. So this n plus 1 basically is going to fall down. It's going to be n plus 1 times is the x in the part of n plus 1 minus 1 plus the derivative of a, of a constant here is simply going to be equal to the zero. So this n plus one and this n plus one are going to be canceled each other. So what we have here is x in the part of n, which is nothing else as the small f of x. So we just proved that the derivative of the capital F is going to be equal to the small f of x. So let's just do a couple of examples how this formula works. So let's do an example. So if you are given, for example, the small f of x, x, x in the power of 4, then its antiderivative is going to be equal to, according to this formula, x in the power of 5, which is 4 plus 1, divided as a 5 plus some constant. So that we call as an antiderivative of a power function. Well, let us do another example. So f of x is equal to the x in the power of 5, or 15 even, then its antiderivative is going to be equal to the x in the part of 16 divided to the 16 plus a constant. 
Well, what if you uh, you are given a function which is some constant, for example, times to the power function? Well, analogously, as we did before for the case of the derivatives, in the case of the other derivatives, this constant can be taken out from here, and you can simply write this as the x in the power of 5 over 5, plus some constant. Okay? So th there is one interesting question is, what is the antiderivative of a, co of a constant? What is the antiderivative of a constant? Well, we know that if you are given a constant, its derivative is simply equal to the zero. Now I would like to know what is the antiderivative of, of this function. And again, I would like to give you the formula of the antiderivative of the power function. If you are given the power function, then its antiderivative is going to be equal to the x in the power of n plus 1 divided to the n plus 1 plus a constant. Well, if you are given some constant, you can write this down as a constant times the x in the power of 0, because x in the power of 0 is going to be simply equal to 1. Then we're going to use this formula for the antiderivatives. It's going to be x in the power of uh, c times the x in the power of 0 plus 1 divided to the 0 plus 1 plus a constant 1, let's say, because this is another constant. And this is going to be cx plus another constant. So instead of just having 0 as in the case of the derivatives, we are going to be simply multiply the constant to the, to the x. So I would like to just briefly give you the table of antiderivatives. Table of antiderivatives. And let's make this table together. So let me write down the small f of x in the first column, then its antiderivative on the second column, then on the on the last we are going to make the justification. Justify them. So essentially, we are going to take the derivative of the capital F in order to show that this is going to be equal to the small f. Again, if you're given the x in the power of n, it's going to be x in the power of n plus 1 divided to the n plus 1. And this is what we already showed. So if you're given, for example, 1 divided to the x, then its antiderivative is going to be equal to the ln of x because we know that the derivative of the ln of x is equal to the 1 over x. So what is the antiderivative of the e in the power of x? Well, it's going to be sim simply e in the power of x because the derivative of the e in the power of x is equal to the e in the power of x. Well, here is a, a little bit of confusion about the trigonometric functions because if I ask you what is the antiderivative of the sine of x, it is not going to be cosine of x anymore. It's going to be minus cosine of x because the derivative of the minus cosine of x which is going to be equal to the plus sine of x. So the cosine derivative is equal to the minus sine with this minus in, in front of this minus uh, cosine is going to be equal to the plus sine. So what is the antiderivative of the cosine then? It's going to be equal to the sine of x because the derivative of the sine of x is equal to the cosine of x. So the justification is always easy. So you need to take the derivative of the antiderivative and check this is equal to the derivative of the original. Uh, so the, whether this is equal to the original function. So for example, let me give you a couple of more examples. So the second in the square of x, its antiderivative is going to be equal to the tangent of x because the derivative of the tangent is equal to the one over cosine in the square, which is second in the square. Well, let's do a couple of examples. So let's say you are given a function so let's do an example. Small f of x is equal to e in the power of x plus 20 times the 1 plus x in the square. Uh, oh, x in the square, let's see. So we need to find its antiderivative. So it is also given that f of 0 is equal to the minus 2. So you will understand why we need this f of 0, which is equal to the minus 2, in a moment. So first of all, I'm going to just take the antiderivative of this term, this term, and this term. 
So let me expand the function. So it's going to be e to the power of x plus 20 plus 20 times the x in the square. Well, we can take the antiderivative separately for each of the term. So the antiderivative of the e to the power of x is simply e to the power of x. Plus the antiderivative of the 20 is going to be equal to the 20 times to the x. This is what we did before. And the antiderivative of the 20 times to the x in the square is going to be 20 times to the x in the cube divided to, to, uh, divided to the 3. Right? So if you remember, the antiderivative of the power function is like x to the power of n plus 1 divided to the n plus 1. Plus some constant. So we should never forget about the constant. Because now, if you take the derivative of the capital F, you're going to get exactly the small f of x. Well, so we would like to exactly know what is the value of the c, and we are going to use this equation in order to find this. So we substitute 0, all the appearances of the x here. So here, here, here was the 0. And we are going to substitute f big prime of x, where f, oh. Sorry, I think uh, you are given the capital F of 0 is equal to the minus 2. So instead of F big pro, uh, F capital F of x, we are going to substitute minus 2. So it's going to be minus 2 is equal to the e in the part of 0 plus 20 times the 0 plus 20 times the 0 in the cube of 3 plus a constant. So e to the power of 0 is 1. If it goes to the left, it's going to be minus 3. So the c is equal to the minus 3. While the antiderivative of this function is going to be equal to the e to the power of x plus 20x plus 20 over 3x in a cube minus 3. So this is how we are going to take the antiderivatives of the functions. So most of the time, so we are going to use the formulas, but in general, it is not so simple and straightforward as in the case of the derivatives. So thank you very much. Hope this video was helpful for you.